The Mavic registry is um, myocarditis and ventricular arrhythmia registry. Um, essentially, this registry has been formed to assess the frequency uh, of the uh, myocarditis in patients who present with frequent symptomatic um, premature ventricular contractions and how uh, treatment of, these, uh, of this myocarditis um, um, impacts the outcomes in patients. The findings, as, as you saw there, 51% um, of the patients who come with PVCs uh, end up having underlying myocardial inflammation as uh, documented by the FDG PET scans. Um, what's also interesting about this is uh, of these 51% of the patients who do have inflammation, about 49% of them have depressed left ventricle ejection fraction and 51% of them have preserved ejection fraction. Um, clearly, uh, raising the issue of how inflammation could be a major factor in uh, manifesting premature ventricular contractions. And um, so, to, so to sort of give you sort of the overlay of what we found. So when we saw the inflammation in these patients, uh, we put them through thorough workup like the immunological markers and making sure that they don't have connective tissue disorders. And in about 50% of these cases, we did myocardial biopsy. Um, what was interesting about this was a, a large number of patients had non-specific lymphocytic infiltrative myocardial inflammation, which is oftentimes seen in post-viral myocarditis. A few patients had sarcoidosis and a few patients had mere fibrosis without any inflammation. And about 25% of the patients, the biopsies were normal, which is again an inherent problem with biopsies because you may not be able to get the piece of tissue that you really want to. Uh, your biopsy may not be in the region of inflammation. If it is a normal tissue, then you get normal biopsy piece. So once we got this figured out, uh, we chose a regimen where we offered immunosuppressive therapy to patients. Um, this consisted of starting off with an initial dose of prednisone at 40 milligrams once a day, uh, tapered over three months, and then we repeated the PET scan in these people to see if the myocardial inflammation result. We also did a follow-up halt, halt to really see how the PVC burden was impacted. Um, if there was improvement, uh, a significant improvement, then we continued the steroids. If we did not see a significant improvement, uh, then we added an immunomodulatory agent like methotrexate or cyclophosphamide or uh, azathioprine and things like that and followed them through forwards on a combination of low-dose prednisone and an immunosuppressive therapy, repeated the PET scans and the halters to see if this response has improved. What is interesting is about 65% of the people actually had a pretty dramatic improvement in their, in their PET scan patterns and their arrhythmia burden. Uh, then there were about um, uh, 18 to 20 percent of patients who actually had some partial improvement. And in these patients, we actually continued the immunosuppressive therapy. In a small percentage of patients where the symptom burden from the PVCs was significantly higher, we did offer these patients a PVC ablation to help them with the symptoms, but not that it's going to make a huge difference with the underlying myocarditis. There were about nine patients who did not seek any immunosuppressive therapy. It was a patient's choice not to be on immunosuppressive therapy. But we followed these patients prospectively, and what we found was pretty disturbing. About 67% of these people actually do develop worsening myocardial inflammation, worsening ejection fraction. They get uh, their PVC burden significantly increases. So what this highlights is, is are these PVCs a marker of something more uh, sinister that's happening inside the myocardium, or is this your window of opportunity to investigate them further and identify a problem that could potentially become uh, a more significant disease in the form of non-ischemic cardiomyopathy? If you look at the data that was previously published by the UCLA group by Rod Tung and Cal Shokumar, they have found that close to 40% of patients who present with non-ischemic cardiomyopathy have underlying myocarditis, whether it is due to sarcoid or any other pathophysiologic process. So if you connected these darts in the, uh, in the entire spectrum of the evolution or the natural history of the evolution of the disease, are these PVCs an early manifestation uh, of what's to come down the road? And are we able to alter the natural course of this particular disease process by 
early intervention using immunosuppressive therapy, thereby you can prevent the down the road, down the stream, non-ischemic cardiomyopathy that's going to manifest. My recommendation based on very small data set is to keep your eyes and ears open and don't assume that every PVC is a normal PVC and we don't have to ablate every PVC. <clears throat> I think every PVC with a higher burden, when the patient is symptomatic and they have a very high burden of PVCs, I think it begs further workup. I would start off with a PET scan and make sure there is no underlying inflammation if there is inflammation, you have to work these people up further. If there is no inflammation, then I think all the other things that we end up doing are, are okay. Absolutely. I don't think uh, by any means uh, uh, the, the preliminary data that our registry generated is uh, gospel. Uh, we really have to ratify this. I mean, we are scientists. We're not going to simply uh, accept what's come from small studies or small registries like this. We got to um, study this in a bigger way. Um, as a part of that, we're expanding this registry to more institutions that are interested in becoming part of it. And I also think that here is a good opportunity for us to revisit this issue of myocarditis and do a randomized controlled trial uh, where we can do some uh, real immunosuppressive therapy versus our conservative management strategies that everybody talks about. So I think it's a great opportunity to do more, more work in this.